Some web applications store user password hash in a cookie when a user enables the remember me or stay logged in feature. In such scenario, if the web application is vulnerable to XSS, then an attacker can potentially exploit the XSS vulnerability to capture other users' cookie and crack their password hash and take over their account. During this video, we look at this scenario in action. For the purpose of this video, we use a lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. To solve this lab, we need to exploit the stored XSS to capture Carlos' state logged in cookie and use the cookie value to crack his password so we can log in into application as Carlos and delete his account. All right, let's get started by clicking on access the lab. First, we go to the login page of the application. Let's fill out the username and password with our account credentials that we got from lab description and also tick stay logged in checkbox, then click on login. As we see the provided user credentials were valid and we could log in into our account. To check how the stay logged in feature works, let's go to the burp HTTP history and choose the login request. In the response tab, we see the application has issued a cookie called state logged in. When a user enables the state logged in feature, the web applications normally generate a token containing information related to that particular user and store that token in a cookie. So later when the user wants to access his account, the application checks that cookie to verify the user identity. So now we are interested to see what information this application has stored in the state logged in cookie. We select the value of this cookie and in the inspector tab, we see Burp has identified the value of the selected cookie is encoded using base64 and it has already decoded the cookie value. As we see the first part of the decoded text is our account username and the second part is a string. This might be the password hash of our account. Let's copy this text and paste it in Google to see if we can find out what hashing algorithm is used. We choose the first link and as we see, this is the MD5 hash value of our account password. So the application stores username and password hash of the user account in the stay logged in cookie. So if we could capture the stay logged in cookie of another user in this application, we can easily crack the password hash and log in into that user account. From the lab description, we already know this application is vulnerable to stored XSS. So we can exploit the XSS vulnerability to capture another user's cookie. All right, let's go ahead and first log out of our account. Then in the home page, we choose the first blog post. At the bottom of the page, we see comments from different users and also a section for posting new comments. To quickly confirm the application is vulnerable to stored XSS, let's post a comment and use a simple XSS payload. In the comment field, we put a simple script and fill out the name, email, and website inputs. Then we post a comment. So our comment containing a simple XSS payload is submitted. Let's go back to the same blog post. We get an alert box so the application doesn't perform any input validation on user input. Now that we know the comment field is vulnerable to stored XSS, let's go ahead and see if we can exploit XSS vulnerability to capture another user's cookie. We need an XSS payload that can capture the victim cookie and send it to a server under our control. Since the application is not performing any form of input validation, we can use a simple payload. For the XSS payload, we can use an IMG tag. The SRC value is an invalid URL, so when the web page wants to load the image, it will trigger an error. And the onError event value is defined to make an HTTP request to an external domain and send the user cookie as part of that request. Now we only need to replace the domain name with the server that we control. For the domain name in the XSS payload, we use the exploit server. From top of the web page, click on go to exploit server. Let's copy the exploit server domain name and go back to the blog post page. In the comment field, we put the XSS payload. Let's replace the domain with exploit server domain. Then fill out other input fields and post the comment. 
Now that the comment containing the XSS payload is submitted, if any user visit this blog post, stored XSS will be triggered and it will capture and send the state logged in cookie into the exploit server. Alright, let's take a look at the exploit server to check if any user has visited the same blog post. In the exploit server, we click on access log. As we see, there is an HTTP GET request containing the state logged in cookie. Let's copy this cookie value. We can use Burp Decoder to decode the cookie value. So we go to Burp Decoder and paste the cookie value. Then we choose Decode as Base64. So now we have the username and password hash of the victim user. For cracking the hash password, we copy the password hash and in the browser, we go to a search engine and paste the password hash. Let's choose the first link. As we see, we could easily crack the victim password. Now that we have both the username and password of the victim user, we can go ahead and log in into his account. Let's copy the password and go back to the application login page. We fill out the username and password fields with the victim user credentials and click on login. As we see the provided username and password were correct and we could log in into application as Carlos. To solve the lab, we need to delete Carlos account. So let's go ahead and click on delete account. We submit Carlos password once again and proceed to delete the account. We get the message that we solved the lab and we managed to delete the victim account. During this video, we saw how an attacker could capture a state logged in cookie containing the user password hash to correct the password and take over the victim user account. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel as I upload new videos every week.